1979. It's remembered as one of the most exciting music movements of the 20th century and now, more than 50 years since it all began at the Wigan Casino, Northern Soul is back. The new Northern Soul orchestrated tour promises to transport audiences back to that time, inspired by the Northern Soul prom at the proms last year. You might remember we talked about it. It's been a huge hit, not just there at the time, but also on catch up. A million of people have played it. Just have a look. This is what it looked like. Whoa, I never ever felt like this before. But all I can say is, Mama, give me some more. Northern Soul at the proms last summer. That was brilliant, wasn't it? Stuart McConey's here. You, you helped sort of curate it, didn't you? Yeah, um, curated by myself and Joe Dell, who will be conducting the new uh, shows. But it was, it, was a, it was a collective triumph, I think. The singers, the BBC Concert Orchestra, the conductor, you, everything. You were a bit nervous about it, weren't you, when you talked to us last year beforehand? I wasn't nervous. I, I knew the music was great. And I knew the BBC Concert Orchestra and the singers would be great, but I wondered if the records are so vibrant and mm. exciting and they have such energy, I wondered whether it would be trying to, you know, trap lightning in a bottle. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the, yeah. Could we reproduce it live or would it sanitise it somehow? And I needn't have worried. It was, a, it was an absolute triumph. Yeah. I think everyone who was there, or, or the millions of people who've watched it since then, would agree that it was a, it was a night to remember. Totally, totally. And what was it like being in the room? Extraordinary. I mean, towards the end, I got quite... People have said to me, you look like you're quite emotional, and I was. Towards the end, when I realised the whole of the Royal Albert Hall was on their feet. I mean, really, the whole of it was on their feet. And people who... It was comprised of that audience of people who loved Northern Soul and people who didn't know the first thing about Northern Soul, who were a proms audience, essentially. And I just thought it was... The, the, the collective sense of joy in the room was amazing. I walked out from backstage into the actual hall during the night... And it was a really goose-pimpling moment, one of, you know, a, a moment to remember. And now you're taking it to the next step, the next level. Yeah, well, on the night, as soon as we'd finished, the initial reaction was backstage from the people in the concert orchestra, from the conductor, from all of us, we have to do this again. <laughs> so we are, we're doing it five more times at least, I hope, uh, starting in Wolverhampton on the 24th of April, yeah. And I, I love what you said about Northern Soul, which you think there are very few people who are immune to it. Just explain what, why that is. I just think there's something about the records. These records capture the, the short records. That's why there's 36 of them in the prom and in the live shows we're going to do. They're short. They capture... It's not just about youth. It's about the drama of being alive. It's about romance. It's about heartbreak. It's about hard times. It's, it, it's music that's very it, warm and human and dramatic. The tunes are great. They're perfect for dancing to. I find it hard to believe that many people can sort of resist the allure of Northern Soul. And it's the people's music, isn't it? It's not top-down, it's... No, up. absolutely, and I think it's interesting, that sense of kinship I think I talked about last summer between... Mm. This is music made in black working class communities in the 60s in America, in places like Detroit and New York, that transferred to mainly the industrial north and midlands of Britain in the 1970s, when people were equally having hard times. Yeah. And I think there's a sense of kinship between those communities. I wonder whether that's why it's resonating now. A lot of people have been struggling with the cost of living and stuff. I wonder, does, it does that well... backdrop sort of I, feed you into know what? it? It could well be. When times are tough... People need the sort of collective release of the dance floor or the club or just even in their own homes. I mean, we saw, you know, we saw that night that people were just... The appetite for it was, was amazing. And it is that kind of music. It is, it is, a music, it is an ecstatic music. Uh, you mentioned the BBC Orchestra and how amazing they are. Um, how did they react to this? And obviously you said that they want to do it again. But were you surprised by that enthusiasm? Yeah, well, I knew they'd be good. Yes, Come we on. knew it'd we be good. We have to say the BBC <laughs> yeah. are a wonderful organisation and yeah. employs talented people, but... Of course. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I didn't realise they'd take to it with such gusto. Some of them said to me we, as we came off, you know, we are buzzing. Thank you for giving us this music to play. We are buzzing with this. Because I think quite a lot of them were Northern Soul fans, you know, but they don't get a chance to, don't get a chance to play it. Th those records, the Northern Soul records, the originals, are full of orchestras and strings and brass. So it did, it did suit it perfectly, but I wasn't sure how how well it could be recreated on, let's face it, the, the venerable stage of the yes. Royal Albert Hall, you know, so... We saw some pictures a minute ago of Wigan Casino, which mm. was a classic venue, mm. but the other places you're going to with this tour, Wolverhampton, London, Manchester, Sheffield, Gateshead, how important were the venues, the places, the cities you picked for this? Well, um, as I said, we're doing a London show, we're doing the Royal yep. Festival Hall, which is great. The other shows are all around, at this stage, anyway, the North and the Midlands, which were the heartlands of Northern Soul. We begin in Wolverhampton, which had a legendary Northern Soul club called the Catacombs. And so we, um, yeah, these are the kind of places, that's, that's Wigan Casino, that sadly burned down in the 1980s, yeah. so we won't be going there, which is a shame, as I'm from Wigan. But no, I think we are taking it to the heartland of Northern Soul, but of course, one would hope, if these are successes, we will we'll go other places too. Talk to me about the dancing. The dancing is... I mean, everyone normally associates with this very athletic dancing. Yes. I have to say that there are many different styles of Northern Soul dancing, people who like to float across the dance floor, some people who regard it more of an, uh, of an athletic pursuit. And I noticed that a few people on the Royal Albert Hall, that, the gentleman you're seeing there, yes. I, I don't do that much anymore, otherwise <laughs> a team of paid attendants <laughs> would be leading me quietly away to waiting paramedics. <laughs> but um, the, but the, I noticed that people, there were some people, and, the, and there were a lot of young people in the audience at the Royal Albert Hall, and I'm hoping that happens again, because it's, a, it's music, that, it's a baton, if you like, that gets handed down again and again to people hear these records, they hear, they hear me play them on the radio, they hear their mum and dad's play them and think, what is this great music? It's, it's, it's impossible music, as I said, to be immune to. Yeah, totally. We were talking about some other dancing yesterday on the programme because the actor Vicky McClure and mm -hmm. her husband Johnny Owen, uh, they're launching day discos for, for older people who maybe don't want to stay out at, not, at night yeah. too late, that you yeah. can dance and boogie during the day. Well, in some ways, Northern Soul originally was the, was the entire antithesis of that. The idea was you didn't start till 11 o'clock and you stayed up till 8 but no, I mean, not, there are a lot of Northern Soul daytime discos now. There are a lot of all-dayers as well as all-nighters. Um, I recently went to an all-dayer that became an all-nighter in Blackpool for the 50th anniversary of Wigan Casino. So there are, there are no rules. However you want to come to this music is fine. And it's joyful, isn't it? It is joyful, even when it's, even when it's about heartbreak and hard times. There's a joy in it. It's about the joy and drama of being alive, of being human. And you can't be persuaded to do a little dance? No, I have been doing a little early. You can <laughs> bend in the back of the sand, you know. You'll have, to wait for the, you'll have to wait for the shows for that. <laughs> Stuart, it's always lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. Good luck with it. It, uh, it looks absolutely brilliant, Thank you. It? Yeah, and tickets for Northern Soul Orchestrated go on sale on Thursday at 9 o'clock. It's coming up to 9 o'clock. We'll have the headlines for you in just a moment. Stay with us.